Um, I am a Zionist, and I spend a ton of my time thinking about how we all impact each other. So I wanted to raise that voice up because um, I think that we at JCRC represent a huge swath of the Jewish community, and perhaps not yourself, perhaps not yourself, but even though... But, but I yes, see that you're serving a Jewish community, and that's valid also. Yes, and so despite the fact that I personally am not queer, I am a queer ally, and I represent a ton of people in the LGBTQ community, and that's sure. why I'm here, and that's why all of these people are I'm so glad so. that you'll be supporting us and cheering us along as we're marching. Yeah. Yeah. We, will, we will all be cheering. Shabbat Shalom. Which I think, Shabbat Shalom. Which I really think is a beautiful thing. We can put this issue aside yeah. and work to advance the LGBTQ community in America. That's why we're here. I really appreciate all of the Jewish dykes showing up in your wholeness today, and I'm so appreciative of folks who aren't themselves dykes who are here to be supportive of dykes and our leadership. Um, and I ask you all to hold that, and I ask you all to hold all of the hopes and dreams of the Jewish community and all of our dignity and all of our mess, and also know that Palestinians are just as whole and deserve to just we enjoy do. our dykes. We agree with that. Awesome. We should be all set up. I would, I would ask that you work on building bridges rather than dividing people. Because what you're doing now With is respect, dividing people that's what rather we want. than yeah. building respect, bridges. Um, what does dice mean to you? That's separate and apart from the question that you pose and that I'm posing to you. So the thing is, I'm, this I'm is the asking, dike march and I'm this is dike for dike. For dike. So if that's you are a dike, we can totally... I'm obviously not a dike. So that's well, the point. Although I have many dike friends and I'm queer myself. Right, so that's the, the thing. This isn't the right space but for this is conversation. For queer people, it's just a space for dykes. Okay. There are... There are men really inside. Dice. Are you okay? So, is that the other really men inside? So you can't tell what somebody's gender is by looking at them, okay. which is why I'm asking folks if they identify as a dyke. And if they do, <laughs> like this so if they is identify for them. as a dyke, but they're Israelis. What then? And they Absolutely. want to wear a shirt that says they're proud dying. Israelis. If they don't so the, di the distinction there is that, for example, I'm an American citizen. I have a, I actually have a range. Yeah, I'd happily answer that. Israeli you and I that have a, a discussion. Why aren't I allowed in the march will, as my full I will happily, Jewish self? Yeah, I'd happily answer that. So you and I have a different relationship to this flag. And I see the one who gets to define it because I'm one of the organizers of Dyke March. For all of the Jews I'm not state. saying I do. I'm. Breathing, I was one of the breathing, people who designed this event to hold the variety of needs of as many so people as possible. What about the vast majority of the American Jews? I think that. you're incorrect about that vast majority no, part, but, but let's talk statistic. about the flag real quick. So the many of us who look at this flag, especially Palestinians who look at this flag, see the outline and the shape and proportions of the Star of David in Easy this flag. Right. A, it's, a religious it's a, symbol? Right. It's in the middle a, of a please flag? Please let me finish. Just the it's a graphic, graphic design. This is, the pers this is the exact same graphic design as on the Israeli flag. That's it not would Israel. Be, That's not on me. I it's super Jewish, agree that it's super frustrating Jewish, that Israel co-opted the Jewish David, star. David, if you would please, yeah, 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 if you would please let me finish talking. Israel is the Jewish state. Israel is the state of Israel by two thousand. How about you step in? It outlives the Jewish people by two thousand years. The star. It's a great star. Hold me personally accountable for what you perceive the state of Israel to do, and not allow me to march in your march with this flag. Is it I'm not saying you can't. I'm saying it's. Palestinians. Are we allowed to march with this flag? You can if you want to. Any consideration of Palestinians, but you can if you want to. We'd love to talk to you. And you can't point us out to you. So it would be inappropriate of me to put a Palestinian on the spot like that, but if you meet folks who want to talk to you. I would be more than happy to speak off camera. For sure. No, I mean in terms of they might not want to spend their time at Jake March talking about something that's a source of harm in their lives. Nobody wants to spend their time at Jake March today talking about Just Zionism. Just ask them. Give them the oh, money. We're not here to talk about Israel and Palestine. We're here to march as Jews. You know, like, you're welcome to do that. Like, no, that's you, all you, all you have blockaded you. us out of your march. All we ask is aside. that you move the... Uh, Will you stand you know, aside? Am I allowed to march with this? I would like to finish my statement about this. We are now on the last card in the tarot key that equates to the ethereal and physical form of the twin souls. And this card is number nine, the hermit.
And just as the third eye and crown chakra are connected together at the top of the ancient Egyptian number key, so are the sacrum and root chakras connected at the bottom of this key. Many may wonder why such an ordinary card with little symbolism such as the hermit card can be attributed to such an important and divine number as nine. However, that lack of symbolism and simplicity is in itself symbolic of what this card is revealing. For the hermit card is showing that the attainment of the divine trinity is an inner and individual journey. The soul is now at the bottom gate, ready to make the ascent back to the top to be returned to perfect wholeness and be crowned with Christ consciousness. However, this journey of each soul must come through walking the inner path and moving beyond each gate by conquering the shadows that keep us bound to the material plane. A soul conquers these shadows of his dark, unconscious nature by having an understanding of himself. And this is done through knowledge seeking and wisdom. Ecclesiastes 7.12 For wisdom is a defence. And money is a defense, but the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Proverbs 4, 7. Wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. The lantern he holds in front of him illuminates his path, and it is symbolic also for the illumination within his own heart. For we see that within the lantern there is a six-pointed star representing the hexagram. And as we have seen in the previous videos, the hexagram is symbolic for the upper and lower forces meeting at the ethereal heart. We can see the star also aligns with the hermit's heart, and his hand is held above, aligned with the third eye. For as we now know, the truth of ourselves will be revealed to us through the heart and mind working in harmony. So now let us see where the hermit card is connected on the golden mean section. And we see that this is at the number 34. As previously mentioned, this equates to both the sacrum and root chakra on the ancient Egyptian number key. And when we deduce 34, we get 7. So now we have a symbolic connection to the seven gates that the hermit must traverse to be crowned at the seventh gate as the divine trinity. These gates are also known as the seven heavens, and this is found in many major traditions and mythologies, such as Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, and Christianity, as well as in Hermeticism and Gnosticism. And in Abrahamic religions, the throne of God is said to be above the seventh heaven. And this again equates with the crown chakra and Ketha on the Kabbalah tree of life. In the Quran, it states, See you not how Allah has created the seven heavens, one above the other, and made the moon a light in their midst, and made the sun a lamp? This verse is relating to the seven inner gates to God and also symbolically represents the male and female twin souls in the sun and the moon. The Hindu tradition also has the concept of seven heavens and the seventh heaven is known as Brahmapura and it is said to be the abode of the god Brahma. The seven gates are not just representing the ascent back to the divine within us but also the seven primary energetic points of the ethereal body. Luke 13, 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate, for many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. However, let us look again at the number 34. It is obvious our ancient ancestors knew the importance of this number, and 34 had a significant role in their astronomical calculations. In the prehistoric temples of Chaco Canyon in New Mexico, one of the most famous of these temples is the Casa Rinconada. This temple is circular and has 34 masonry vaults corresponding to an astronomical cycle of 34 days. There are also some very interesting quotes in regards to this number from some notable representatives within the religious establishments. In a vision, Brother Joseph Francis tells that one day he saw the crowning of the thorn of our Lord during his passion. By three times, one had removed and replanted the crown, and each time 
thorns penetrated in his head, leaving 34 deep wounds. Another is from the priest Padre Pio, who said about himself, I am a priest who prays. One day he answered to his superior, who asked him how many rosaries he had recited each day. Bah, to my superior, I have to tell the truth. I recited 34 of it. And Dante, who many considered as being a great initiate, devoted 33 songs of his divine comedy to the purgatory, 33 to the sky and 34 to hell. What Dante relayed here is very significant, as we now understand that 33 is related to the crown chakra at the top gate, and 34 to the root chakra at the bottom gate, and Dante had strong connections within the religious institutions, especially Pope Boniface. So therefore, it is not hard to imagine he had access to secret knowledge. However, there are yet other numbers encoded within the number nine hermit card. For if we look at the Fibonacci sequence once again and add the sum of all the previous numbers to this point, we get the number 88. 88 is a very important number symbolically, for this is relating to the male and female twin souls. Each eight is symbolic of the immortal soul that is to make the ascent through the seven gates back to God and the divinity within themselves. And when we deduce 88, we get 16, and 1 and 6 are 7. So again we see the ethereal body and seven gates encoded within this number. In Mandarin, 88 translates to Ba Ba, and it is also interesting to note that the ancient Egyptians called the soul Ba Tu. 88 is also the time it takes Mercury to orbit the Sun, and we see the connection to Mercury and Hod in the tetrahedron representing the soul on the bottom of the Kabbalah tree of life. We see the number 7 and 8 also being interrelated symbolically in number 17, the star tarot card. This card equates to an 8. However, when we look at the stars depicted on this card, there are seven eight-pointed white stars. And if we include the yellow eight-pointed star in the middle, symbolic of the divine, we now have eight stars with eight points. And so we also have the number 88 symbolically represented within this card. On the Kabbalah Tree of Life, the number nine hermit card is equated to Malkuth. However, both the root and sacrum energy points are the energetic forces relating to the earthly connection of our ethereal body. In the previous videos, we have already seen the attributes within Malkuth that relate to the tetrahedron representing the trinity within each soul. Now we will look into the other foundational attributes of Malkuth in relation to the ascent back up the seven gates to Kether. For one must understand that the Kabbalah tree of life encompasses many different levels of information, all relating to the soul, not only in the physical and ethereal, but also the soul's creation and ascent back to be reunited with the divine. The Severot Malkuth sits at the bottom of the tree at the first gate and is connected to the root chakra. In Hermetic and Christian Kabbalah, Malkuth is known as kingdom and is associated with the realm of matter and earth relating to the physical world we exist within. This is the kingdom that emanates from the divine source to be manifest in the material but is also reflected back up to the source in an infinite cause and effect relationship. As above, so below is reflected into the infinity. This is also shown in the number 10, the number of Malkuth, as 10 is an infinite number when divided by the Trinity. The Kabbalah tree of life is not only representing the soul at the bottom in the tetrahedron, but also the ascent of the soul back through the seven gates, also depicted on the tree of life at the seven chakra points. If we add the sum of all the sephiroth and paths representing the chakra points, 
when we get to the third eye chakra, this equates to 85. And if you add 3 for the trinity, you get 88. Shalom, shalom, Mishpaka. So you can see there what uh, the star, you can see that it's used for all kinds of things, but mainly for uh, mysticism, the occult, and, and it's used here in this Kabbalah tree. And you can see it is used for the ascension back to the divinity, to the crown. And that 88, like she said, basically is the six-pointed star. Now, <clears throat> before I go any further, I want to give all esteem, all praise, all honor, and all glory to the Most High, Abba Yahuwah, our wonderful creator. I want to show you a little bit more um, about that, about the... Uh, star show you how it is the delta in its relationship to what's going on and to pride okay I want you to notice what you I'm sure you've seen Mr. T's hand symbols there see right here a hexagram in the Greek or sexagram in Latin is the six-pointed star it is used to place a hex a curse just like the Most High said in his word would happen now if we go down here and we look at the usage of this in Freemasonry we look at it says the interlacing triangles or deltas Deltas symbolize the union of the two principles or forces, the active and passive, male and female, pervading the universe. The two triangles, one white and the other black, interlacing, typify the mingling of, an, of apparent opposites in nature, darkness and light, error and truth, ignorance and wisdom, evil and good. What did the Most High say that that tree was they were to not touch or eat of? It was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If you're wearing that, or if you, you believe that uh, it's okay to play around with these things, you are full of pride. Pride comes before destruction. And in Isaiah, the Most High said, Woe to the crown of pride. In that tree of life the Kabbalah tree it says that they will ascend back with the interlacing they will ascend back to the crown okay let me read out of James here what it says in James times people they do not want to listen to anyone who isn't uh, in a high place the way they see it they don't want to talk to anyone or they won't take um, scripture or advice from anyone if they are not of a high place they um, they don't see them as uh, someone who could possibly have truth to share share with them let me read this for you if any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of the most high who gives to all generously and without reproach and it shall be given to him but he should ask in belief not doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind 
For that man should not think that he shall receive whatever from the master. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. And let the lowly brother boast in his exaltation, but the rich in his humiliation, because as a flower of the field he shall pass away. You see, a lot of times when the Most High has given me truth and I have shared that truth with people, they do not even consider it. They don't bother to even acknowledge it because it comes from me. But if it were to come from their pastor, someone who they think highly of, they would acknowledge it. But a lot of these pastors, their desire is to stand with Israel and to give esteem to that star. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it has been accomplished, brings forth death. Do not go astray, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no change nor shadow of tur turning. There's no change in him. He said in the Torah and the commandments, do not have any graven images of anything up in the heavens, on earth, or in the sea. That is a star that you have, that you give esteem to. Therefore, right there, we know not to, do, to, to have anything to do with it. My brothers, do not hold the belief of our master, Yahushua Messiah, the master of esteem with partiality. For if there should come into your meeting place a man with gold rings and a splendid robe, and there should also come in a poor one dressed in rags, and you pay attention to the one wearing the splendid robe and say to him, you sit here in a good place, and say to the poor one, you stand there or sit here by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with wicked thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers, has the Most High not chosen the poor of this world, rich in belief and heirs of the reign which he promised to those who love him, not to those who own church buildings and who set, stand on a stage at the altar? But you have shown disrespect towards the poor man. Do not the rich oppress you and drag you into the courts? Do they not blaspheme that good name by which you are called? If you truly accomplish the sovereign law according to the scripture, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You do well. But if you show partiality, you commit sin, being found guilty by the Torah as transgressors. For whoever shall guard all the Torah and yet stumble in one point, he is guilty of all. For he who said do not commit adultery also said do not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but you do murder, you have become a transgressor of the Torah. So speak, and so do as those who are to be judged by a Torah of freedom. For the judgment is without compassion to the one who has shown no compassion, and compassion boasts over judgment. So you show no compassion to those who are lowly, who may have come up and been brought through a life, a life that I will call a testing, a life of fire but but you won't you won't take words from them but you'll listen to those who have uh, lived a life being fed off uh, by a silver spoon and a lot of these people I've noticed they've um, those who love that star they like to uh, a lot of those are Trump supporters and like I've said before Trump is the 88 and I'm going to show you his relationship to the 88 to what's going on with these with this variation in the Maxines uh, our uh, variants I guess and uh, how he is the 88 and how he is the uh, the head oh, excuse me the head uh, over the scorpions with the power in their tails. Let's go and look at um, Operation 
warp speed who Mr. T is the founder of. I've showed y'all this before. And uh, let's see if we can find, maybe it's in the Wikipedia, the logo right here. You see this logo right here? That is uh, um, Anna Karana, anti Karana in the middle of that, that cube with those behind the um, virus ball there, which was fake. That is an anti Karana. And we know that Mr. Trump is the one who takes all the credit for Operation Warp, Warp Speed. Anti Karana. See if I can spell this right. Anti Karana. Right there. See that? That's the cube behind that. Let's we'll see what this says about the anti Karana. Meaning the inner cause refers to the totality of two levels of mind, namely the Buddhai, the intellect or higher mind, and the manas, the middle levels of mind, which according to theosophy exist as or include the mental body. Anti Karana has also been called the link between the middle and higher mind, the reincarnation incarnating part of mind. Now this is all to do with chakras and the tree of life. If you do your own research like I've told you to do, you'll see that this all, everything they're doing, Mr. T himself uh, is probably the head of, you'll see that it is about ascending back to divinity, to the Most High. It is the kingdom of the mixing of iron and clay duality. I'm going to show you, uh, play a little video here about Mr. Trump and how this is all tied into him and Baal worship, which I have been speaking on for time and memorial. We're going to go there right now. I'm going to show you, and, and if you're still tooting Trump's horn, you might want to watch this. J. Trump is a member of the Freeman. An odd way of posing. He seems to favor member emanating the fact. And in this video, I'm going to present three exhibits that will show evidence that Donald J. Trump is a member of the Freemasons or a dark society. So now let's look at exhibit A. Donald Trump has an odd way of posing and sitting. He seems to favor putting his thumb and fingertips together and pointing his hand downwards. And as we look at the hand gesture, it appears to be making an inverted pyramid. He's always doing this. So the question is why? And of course, to show intellectual honesty, we must also include that maybe it's just a habit. Perhaps his fingertips are normally attracted to each other and he can't help it. That's the case. It's a subconscious thing, maybe. Or is it deliberate? It is one of the Freemasonry signs. And as we look at the images, they look deliberate. video to show you that his tower is a temple to Baal. It has the inverted triangle, which is a delta. Um, before 2017, when all this started, the, uh, the Revelation 12 sign in the heavens and the total eclipse, the great American eclipse happened, they brought in the Baal, the arch of Baal, and we know that Baal rides in a whirlwind, which Bush Jr. spoke of in his inauguration speech when Trump and the admirals 
took a photo op in the White House. He said that this reminded him of the calm before, before the storm. Watch this so you can see that what is going on is exactly what is spoke of in Revelation. Harry S. Truman and Gerald Ford. And in this image right here, we can see President Truman in his Grand Master. By now, most of the Western world is familiar with it. It was completed in 1983, and it is... 664 feet high. That's the official reported height of Trump Tower. And before I move on, I want to emphasize the present age of that tower because it's very interesting. In this narrative that we're looking at, and then when we add Donald Trump, who is now the president of the United States, Trump Tower was built in 1983. It's 33 years old. It was completed on November the 30th, 1983, and then it became the home of Donald Trump. Now, if we do the math, it was completed November 30th, 83. Trump was elected president on November the 8th, 2016. And then the Electoral College cast their votes for him on December 19th, 2016. So when the electoral votes were cast for Donald Trump on December 19th, Trump Tower had just had its 33rd birthday. This means the tower was 33 years old when Trump officially became the president of the United States. Now, does this have significance? Is it a coincidence? Well, let's continue and let's find out. Now, officially, Trump Tower has 58 floors, but Donald Trump added an extra 10 floors to the elevator numbers and claims that it has 68 floors. He lives in the top three floors in his penthouse, so... In the mind of Trump, his penthouse begins on 466, which is an interesting number. Now, the purpose of this disclosure is to determine if Donald J. Trump is involved in Freemasonry or some other esoteric dark art or mystical belief. And folks, based on what I'm about to show you, I believe that Trump Tower offers the best evidence. And I'm about to show you why. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the members of their veiled craft will often conceal information in plain sight, and they will use symbols to represent their beliefs. And also, many religions of the occult and paganism will borrow from one another with similar doctrine. And the reason for this is because they all have the same author, also known as Satan the Deceiver. Now, watch this, folks. The Satanic Church's belief of dualism is represented by the transgender Baphomet, which possesses both male and female anatomy. The Freemasons do the same thing with their square and compass, which represents both male and female anatomy. And when we look at the ancient fertility cults of Baal worship, both the male and female anatomy were represented in the pillars, the Asherah and the Grove of Trees. Now let's look at Trump Tower. From the ground level, most people have not noticed that the tower's anatomy tells a concealed story because the attention is always at the front gate of Trump Tower, the main entrance at street level. And when Trump was elected president, a lot of people gathered and took pictures. They wanted to see the famous tower and the New York Police Department had to set up a perimeter to block bystanders from getting too close because it had to be declared a security site and turned into a fortress because America's new president lived there. So a lot of people focused on the front door. But they didn't really look up. Most people didn't study what was above them. When the TV cameras were there and the media was there, they didn't really talk about the outside of the building. And that's because from ground level, it's kind of hard to see what's going on above them. Now, folks, watch this. Based on what I'm about to show you, I'll say it right now. Trump Tower represents the dualism of Bale's pillars. It represents the male portion of the anatomy, and the inverted triangle of Asherah, and the mystical grove of trees. So now, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Exhibit C. This is what the evidence has brought me to conclude. It appears that Trump Tower was built to be a temple, number one, and number two, it was built to be a continual invocation 
to the spirit world. Let me say that again, folks. Trump Tower was built to be in a constant state of spiritual invocation. And I know that sounds crazy. I know it does. But over the past few years, we've witnessed pagan rituals that celebrated the underworld. We have seen it in previous Olympic ceremonies where they did rituals. We've seen it in Super Bowl halftime shows. We've seen it during the Grammys. We saw it when the shamans opened the portals and when Anubis was paraded across the country, the jackaled god that presides over the city of death. And now we have a president who is a very unique individual. He's very wealthy, and he lets everybody know that. He loves to parade his wealth in shiny things. He loves to show the display of gold and silver and precious stones. And now he's the most powerful man in the world. Now, folks, he did not get there by accident. And I also do not believe that he got there based on a prophecy by a retired fireman. I believe the fireman prophecy is false. And I've talked about that on all the programs. And I believe that I have provided evidence to prove that fireman prophecy is not true. If you want to read more about it, you can go to my website, watchmanscry.com. And you'll be able to find it in there. But Donald Trump is the most powerful man in the world. And he didn't get there by accident. I'm not saying it based on just my opinion. I'm basing it on the evidence of Donald Trump that he has revealed himself. Now, when we look... As you can see there in his apartment, if you've ever looked at the... uh, What those paintings are, what his little statues are, they are all... That whole apartment is a shrine to Apollo, Apollyon or a bat on from the, the, the angel with the key to the bottomless pit and he is the one in Revelation that is the king over the scorpions with the power in their tails that word that is used for their tails is a small pinprick it's, a, it's like a needle just like the needle for these maxines now look most Fast forward this so you can see here the the inverted triangle that this guy's talking about on his tower. Watch this. What if he is, ladies and gentlemen, this topic is about Trump Tower. As I stated earlier, most people at the street level only see what's going on at the street level, but they don't see what's going on above them. So now let's look from an aerial view. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Here is the picture. This is Trump Tower before your eyes. The inverted pyramid that represents the female, Asherah, is built into his building. It's right there. We also see above the inverted triangle seven pillars rising, which represents Baal. So we have the female and the male in Trump Tower. There's another image of it. Count the points at the top of the building. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's seven points. And now for the grand finale. Let's zoom in on the inverted pyramid. If you're looking at this image, let's count the trees going across. One, starting from the left, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Do you see it? Six on the top. And then when we count down the right side, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the same thing on the left. One, two, three, four, five, six. What does this mean? It means that Trump's inverted triangle of Asherah that's on his building in the exterior of his home for the last 33 years represents 666. And it does. There you go, folks. Look. <clears throat> People that love him, uh, if you try to show them things about him, they, uh, they talk about things he has said. Uh, this man designed that building with the details he put specific details in the creation of that building okay let me show you when you when these people like to um, uh, say that they go off the things that he says we know that he's a Freemason. Look at the, the triangle. He, he makes his hand a triangle every time he is 
posing for a photo op. Let's read this right here, what Albert Pike said on page 104 in his book, Morals and Dogma. Masonry, like all religions, all the mysteries, hermeticism, and alchemy, which alchemy is the combining of two different uh, elements, conceals its secrets from all except the adepts and sages or the elect and uses false explanations and misinterpretations of its symbols to mislead those who deserve only to be misled to conceal the truth. There you go. Their job is to conceal the truth, to lie and to um, twist the truth and to mislead. Now, when this new variation was first discovered, it was discovered in a town in Colorado. I'm going to show you. That town in Mesa County, Colorado, is called Grand Junction. Grand Junction, just like the Delta, the union between male and female, just like this transgender agenda we've been seeing, that it is all tied into Baal worship. Let's read this right here. The word comes as Colorado reached the milestone of having 2 million people fully vaccinated, but also as the state is clearly facing a fourth wave of the pandemic. Hospital, hospitalizations are at 666 Cobra Vampire Vomit 1-9 patients. <laughs> that town right there, Grand Junction, Colorado, was where the first case of the Delta variant was discovered. When you deny truth, there's only one explanation for it, and I'm going to show you why you have such a hard time believing or hearing the truth. That's because you never had the love for the truth. If you did, you wouldn't be delusional. And for this reason, the Most High sends them a working of delusion for them to believe the falsehood in order that all should be judged who did not believe the truth but had delighted in the unrighteousness. But we ought to give thanks to the Most High always I give thanks to him because he has given me the set apartness, the set apart spirit of truth, and that's why I've delighted in it. That star that you wear around your neck, that you have on your wall, that you have in your congregation is unrighteousness. And the reason you can't see that, the reason you don't see the truth in it, is because you have delighted in unrighteousness. And you had never had the love of the truth. I'll be back with more. And uh, I, can, I can only see uh, any content that I'll make in the future. In the near future is going to have to be about this. Because this is everything right now. The people that refuse the truth. The people that will not listen to uh, sound doctrine, are delusional, but there's always hope there, there might be one, even if it's a young person, one person among them that might hear this truth and wash their robes and dust their feet off from this filthy unrighteousness. That's all for now. I love y'all. Peace out. D is out.